In this instructional video, we're going to talk about the cavet piston technique of obturating with bioceramic. We're going to demonstrate the 65-year-old patient, and we're going to go through the CT mapping of the type 2 or possibly type 3 defect, and the second visit process of finishing the obturation. You can note that the lingual distal lingual defect corresponds exactly to what we saw and mapped on the CT. This is the application of the endo sequence bioceramic. It comes in a very narrow syringe with very high flow. It can be injected deep in the canal. Now I take care not to wedge the syringe so that it binds and will express too much of the bioceramic out the end. In fact, I don't mind it being filled a couple millimeters short. And so the next step you're seeing here is the application of a cavet ball on a 12 or 10 plugger, depending upon the size of the axis. This is a central incisor, a fairly large axis, so I'm applying cavet balls with a number 12 shoulder plugger. I usually place one first very lightly, and then I pack the second one on top of it so that I don't pull the ball out as the first one may stick to the plugger. And so as I put a couple, say two or three cavet balls into the axis, I'll start pressing it down. That acts as a piston to press the bioceramic to the apex. Now in a case like this, I know I was a little bit short, so I'll press the cavet down maybe one millimeter, then take a radiograph and press deeper if necessary to the apex. Here's the cavet placed. I usually go in and wet it. That'll cause the cavet to set. Here's another small cavet ball I'm placing on top. And so I'm being very careful not to have the cavet squashed into the resorption defect, which in this case is at the lingual and the distal lingual area. So the advantage of using the cavet piston technique is that you create a monoblock of the BCS, which is an improvement over the traditional or more common technique of using the BCS as a gutta percha sealer. Um, why would you want to admix gutta percha with BCS when you can have a nice solid monoblock and have the bioactive material purely at the apex causing release of hydroxyl ions? So here I place some water and I use a Versa brush made by Vista, spin it around to get the cavity off the walls and just keep it clean. Taking great care not to press it and to push any cavity into the lingual and distolingual resorption defect. Here we go, more water, using chlorhexidine now. And now you can see you have a nice, crisp, clean access prep with just cavet filling the root canal system and not the periphery where the defect is. There's the radiograph showing the bioceramic pistoned with the cavet to the apical terminus. Now I'm placing biodentine. Biodentine has very good compressive strength properties, and so it's an ideal material to place in a large defect like that. It also has bioactive properties, and it stimulates calcification in when it's opposed next to tissue fluids down deep in the sulcus. So this is an ideal material if there's periodontal communication. So I apply the, the biodentine made by Septodont with an amalgam carrier, and I press it down with a large uh, number 12 shoulder plugger in this case, and then I have my assistant apply an ultrasonic file against the side, and I activate it with my foot to activate ultrasonic energy, which causes the biodentine to flow into the crypt and into the resorption defect. You can see how I do this repeatedly, and I'm getting the biodentine to flow very nicely into the lingual and distal lingual defect. There it is, there's the biodentine placed. Now I'm placing a little bit more to compress it. 12 plugger in this case, pressing it down. Again, having my assistant place ultrasonic at a right angle to the, the plugger, activate it, and it just causes the chunky biodentine to become solubilized and it flows. There we go, there's the placed biodentine, completely filling the resorption crypt, and now I place the cavet on top of it. Now, in this case, I did not want to place the core. Sometimes I'll place a cavet layer and just place the core on top of it. But in this case, I wanted to have um, some bonded composite up higher to give this to some additional strength. There's a cavet being squashed in. Uh, I never put cotton spacers in teeth that I perform endodontics on. 
I like a complete solid fill of temporary right up against the root filling material. So there it is. That was a cabot that I placed at the distal lingual just to kind of seal it to make sure I didn't express any out when I press the biodentine down, taking off the clamp, and the obturation is complete. If you have, biodentine is an ideal material to place in a communicating periodontal sulcus because when it sets, it will help maintain stability of the periodontal tissues and you rarely get a deep pocket. Now, the hygienist will have to be instructed um, on future cleaning visits not to go in and gouge and try and remove irregularities in the crater but quite frankly, after looking at these cases and following them for several years, the biodentine is very stable. This tooth should serve the patient very well for many years.